Um, so we'll quickly cover this material on sequential games. And then um, 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 we'll quickly move on to exchange and welfare and other things. Um, I'll try and cover the materials. I'll go slightly, you know, light version of it. Right. So generally, games, I mean, there are certain games that are done simultaneously. You know, um, the one that everyone, we, we, well, I mostly talked about on Wednesday, StarCraft being one of them. And then, um, what else was there? I mean, rock, scissors, paper being one. But other, okay, I'm still, I keep going into the game territory. But other games are not like that, right? So if you were to that go engaging in that incredibly dangerous game, Civilization, <laughs> Sid Meier's Civilization V, it's not simultaneous. You take a turn, then the computer takes a turn. So if you start off as, I don't know, you don't know be Korea or be Goth or whatever, then everyone else, you know, the France would do a turn, Australia would do a turn. Simple stuff. I mean, there, 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 there are a lot of games like that. We have a, it has a long history of sequential nature, like, Samgukji series, they were all like that. Um, or the, the equivalent were, okay, I am not proud to admit this, but most guys will have done it at one stage, and stuff like, 여러분들도 princess maker 이런 거 있었나요? 해보셨을 텐데 분명히, that's also sequential as well. 여기 왜? 아, 난또 여길 보면서 그래가지고 한양 뭐, 뭐 여기 뭐 있나 했지 뭐. So stuff like that. There are certain games that are you know, that brings back a lot of memories, right? I mean, you know, staying true to my nature, most endings that I got, you know, they get always become a professor or academic somewhere. So you know, that's me being me, I guess. You know, but um, there in in I mean, life situations as well. Uh, but more seriously speaking. When you apply for jobs, you get an offer from somewhere, and then you've got to think about what will happen if you don't accept. Will the second company accept or not? You know, if you have a holding offer, do you have to decide to accept or not? Should I go for you know, a chance of working in a public finance firm like KDB or Export Import Bank or so I accept this offer right in front of me, you know, work with Samsung Securities or something. Both are good, but you know, your preferences might be different. So think of it like this. Player one chooses whether to go for top, bottom, then observing that player one chooses whether to go for left or right, and then the payoff is like this. That's a sequential nature, okay? So, you know, it's like going on a prom in the high school. Do you have similar-ish thingy in Denmark as well? Like America or no, so? Or like slightly that. different, right? So, you know, you got to ask. So it's a century-old tradition, no exception. A girl, I mean, a, guy, a boy asks a girl out, then observing that, you know, you got to decide whether to accept or reject. With, you know, that sort of situation. Actually, if you don't ask a girl out, how she can reject that's a different matter, but okay. Um, so, Stackelberg type of game. That's another good example. Yep. Assuming this pointer works, but it doesn't, so. Order becomes important, okay? Player two can Suppose threaten player one. You're player two and you threaten to player one and says he would always choose left regardless of what player one does. Okay? Left, left. 
So if you're player one, what would you do? You were going to go top, right? So that would leave player two a lot of profit. But you've got to ask, is this threat credible? 우리말로는 credible이 뭐죠? 자, GRE를 준비하시던지 토익, 토익을 준비하시던지 credible은 항상 나오는 단어. 믿을 수 있는, 신뢰할 수 있는가 여부죠. Okay, so suppose player one, I don't care, then just go for bottom, okay? Is it still in player two's interest to go for left? What's she gonna do? Right. So it's not a credible threat. That's the problem. So that's the reason why order of the game becomes important. Player two's threat of choosing left is not a credible threat. So she will change her mind once player one goes ahead with choosing bottom anyway. It's like, you know, this was a very, a good example of this is during the Cold War, okay? Why would you ever retaliate? That's the point. My question is, okay, so think of Park Young Wak saying as someone like Yanina, Joseph Stalin, and then <laughs> think of An Chang Kyuak saying as, who, who, I mean, Anida, Stalin Chugun Ta Amiya Chek So think of Park Young Wak saying as Nikita Khrushchev, the Cuba Missile Test Then, okay, right across, think of An Chang Kyuak saying as John F. Kennedy, Hoshi Naan Diri Neo Monga, Gijo, Digi Humutane. <laughs> <laughs> Liking that. Um, so the point is this. During the Cold War, this was a very common situation. I'm going to shoot back at you if you shoot a nuclear weapon at us. That was a threat. Yeah? But question is, okay, suppose Nikita Khrushchev or Park Young Wang say has a Downs, of, downs two bottles of vodka. He's completely intoxicated. Then he's got that nuclear button in front of me, and he's like, eh, what's that? And then just like presses it, okay? So here goes Atlanta, all destroyed. Is it then in An Chang Yuak Seng's interest to retaliate and start a, in, you know, entire blowout of the absolute total annihilation nuclear war. You know, suppose that Khrushchev comes to his senses. Two hours later, he gets a massive hangover and then like, oh, what have I done? Then like, sees the news, Atlanta in flames. Phones America and says, sorry, mate, that was a mistake. You know, didn't mean to kill one million people. Yeah, okay. Now, is it then in America's interest to retaliate? 복수할 인센티브가 있냐는 거죠. 소련에서 전화가 아 진짜 미안해 몰랐어 몰랐어 백만 명 주거니 아 진짜 미안하다 진짜 어 대박 어 미안 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 <웃음> 이랬다고 쳐봐요. 복수할 겁니까? 화나 <웃음> 대박 그럼 더 화나겠지 물론 복수할 거냐고요. 복수할 인트레스트가 있냐고. 슈퍼 풀 아웃 뉴클리어 워. 근데 복수하는 순간 서로 약뭐 서머인데 미친 듯이 그 레드. So that was the movie like you know that that the one with Sean Connery in it. The, the, the hunt for Red October and then all the all the all that 극가라 영화들 몇개 있었는데. Uh, Crimson Tide being one of them. A couple others like yeah whatever. So if we re Assuming that somehow Soviet Union bombed Atlanta, suddenly it's not in his interest to retaliate because that means not just Atlanta, New York out, San Francisco out, Los Angeles out, everything out. But the problem is, if that's the case, then that 
greatly increases the chance of an accidental nuclear war. So how did America and Soviet Union file, um, tackle this problem, do you think? Yeah, but you know, you might think, you know, if if you don't like America particularly, you might just accidentally shoot one weapon. You could have done it easily. That came close in there were at least three occasions, 1962, 1979, and 1984. So it's not that people didn't consider it. Yeah, Why did they not do it? That was what, okay, maybe, but, okay, Raphael, what about? Yeah, true, but you know, uh, you might, you might. What I'm saying is, okay, accidentally you fire the nuclear weapon, but it's not in the other country's interest to retaliate. Then, so you can do a surgical nuclear strike quite easily, but that never happened. What's the secret in the ingredient? Do you think there's one thing missing? The answer, make. The threat threadable. Uh, make the threat credible, rather. What we mean by that is America and Soviet Union both adopted automatic response system. Once you detect a lunch from Siberia somewhere, I don't know, somewhere like Eugene Salin School, I don't know, Petropavlovsk or somewhere like that, you would it would automatically trigger a sequence so that it's not like a sequential game that you decide. You know that my hand is tied. I know it is not in my interest to retaliate. I don't care. That's not my decision to make. Everything is automated. If you detect a loan from Siberia somewhere or somewhere near, at that point, Leningrad or somewhere, what you see is your entire nuclear submarine fleet would retaliate instantly within 70 seconds or something like that. By doing so, you make that threat of retaliation credible so that both countries would think twice, three times, four times before making that final choice. If Khrushchev is drunk, don't get him near there, okay? Because it is automatic annihilation. 이게, 이게 중요한 겁니다. 가끔은 그래서 나에게 선택의 여지를 안 주는 게 나을 수도 있다고요. 나한테. That, there's a very, very important related example in economics. You can announce and say you're going to pursue low inflation. People believe that and form price expectations really low. But then you as a government then have a chance to manipulate, then pump in all the money, you know, help out all the troubled industry, pump in, I don't know, two billion, one, two trillion ones worth of money or whatever, and try and boost the economy. So the government announcement of we're going to pursue low inflation is just not credible. So like in the 60s, 70s in the America, that creates a lot of problem. We just can't believe the fact that you're going to commit low inflation. So the solution that every developed country found was making central bank independent. Don't make central bank accountable to the government, just directly applicable, just directly independent of its own body. There's a reason for that. You tie your own hand. I don't give a freedom of choice. I would love to be able to manipulate monetary policy if I can. That's good for me, but then people are just simply not going to believe me. 
사람들이 믿지를 않을 테니까 어차피 그러니까 아예 내 손을 선택의 여지에 묶어버리는 거죠 어떻게? 중앙은행을 분리동립시켜 버리는 거죠 그죠? That was the solution that we Sorry, I very much not enjoy criticizing and politicizing this lecture but I'm going to make one heavy criticism of the government today Over the course of the election both parties came up with ideas to get central bank involved in artificially boosting the economy. Never a good idea. If you want to do it, do it with your own accord. 당신들이 쓸수 있는 수단으로 쓰라는 겁니다. Just don't get central bank involved. If the central bank is really, you know, if you think that expansionary policy is necessary, Central Bank would do it of their own accord. 중앙은행이 그렇게 판단하면 그렇게 하는 겁니다. You as a government should never have a right to say in that. It's not a question, I don't think, of opinion. Now, I respect opinion a lot from far left to far right. You know, that's an important aspect of democracy, but When it comes to central bank independence, I think the evidence is there. It's a question of right and wrong, more or less. So I think government is making a big mistake there. But 거의 정치적으로 발언하는 거 들어본 거 처음인 거 같죠, 거의. 근데 그거만큼은 진짜 크게 실수하고 있다고 생각합니다. Now we talked about market mechanism as a way of allocating goods. We talked about consumer surplus, produce surplus, etc., etc. My question is, is that really the best way of allocating resources or i mean it's it, this comes right back into the you know, typical democracy so you know so capitalist versus communist sort of debate or whatever is there a better system or is it better to rely on competitive market but okay i'm not gonna give you a huge lecture on the entire history of how that debate has evolved or anything like that. I'm just going to use a very simple framework and then I'm going to show you a, very, a number of important results. And then I'm going to give you why that result may not hold in practice. So, you know, if really cap free market is the best and, you know, we don't, we're not going to be having this debate. Clearly, some of the assumptions break down, and that's the reason why we get involved. Okay? But to be able to discuss more on these matters, you need to know what framework we're using, I guess. Right? So the fact that this point is not working is quite frustrating. We're going to talk about something called general equilibrium. General equilibrium is where each and every market in this economy is in equilibrium. Everything clears. So the market for, market for whiskey is in equilibrium. Market for chicken is in equilibrium. Chicken으로 시작해서 chicken으로 끝나는 것 같지만 뭔가. 또 뭐가 있죠? Well, so the market for beer is in equilibrium, the market for sanitary pad is in equilibrium, the market for um, the, the hoover is in equilibrium, the market for everything, okay? But it can be a very challenging exercise. You're considering many markets at once, simultaneously. So what we'll restrict our attention to is the very simple case where it's of pure exchange economy. Okay, let's go back to the sort of pre-industrial revolution society where I don't know I two men in Sasnika Ilowaso Imuno Akseng and Dojino Akseng are the two people working in an economy. Imuno Akseng is a farmer, Dojino Akseng is a fisherman. So what we consume are rice and What sort of? 
rice cod tegu. Yeah, okay, rice and cod. Um, so each has their own endowment of each produces some rice and some cod. Nojinakusen also produces some rice and some cod. So they all have their own endowment. 초기 부존 자원이라고 합니다. 그거를. So suppose that you know he might have two sacks of rice and I don't know ten cod. He might have no sack of rice but about two hundred fifty cod or whatever. How do they exchange their goods? Or even is there any exchange necessary? Well, to explain this concept, there's something called Edgeworth's box. So there are two individuals, Imun Hakseng A, Nojun Hakseng B, consuming goods one and two, rice and cod. Okay? So they each have their desired consumption bundle, you know. He doesn't want to consume cod, 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 cod all the time. He doesn't want to eat bowl of rice, 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 rice. 밥만 새끼 먹어도 질릴 기다 요즘 진짜. So you know, consumption might you know they will probably want to consume bit of rice, bit of cod. I think that's the important part. Uh, so think of Imun Hakseng's consumption bundle as X A and Nojin Hakseng's consumption as X B. But both have also their endowment of good one, rice, and good two, cod, like this. Okay, so this is really complicated, but I, I'll explain this in a second. So this is a total amount of rice that both produce. Imun Hakseng starts from this as his origin point. 여기가 원점이에요. 노진 학생 starts from here as his origin. Okay? 이문호 학생 has this much rice and just this little amount of cod. 노진 학생 produces this much rice and from there to here that much cod. So put together the length of the line, entire length of the line. 이 선의 총 길이는 뭐겠어요? 밑에. Total amount of rice produced by both Imun Hakseng and Nojin Hakseng. 그죠? 세로 라인, 세로 상자의 총 길이는 뭐겠어요? 그러면? The total amount of endowment produced by, sorry, um, cod produced by the two people. Okay? So at this point, W. Imun Hakseng has this much rice and this much cod. Nojin Hakseng has that much rice and this much cod. Okay? <laughs> but as I said, people are, people generally have convex preferences. Do you want to eat, you know, rice every day and nothing else? Probably not. Do you want to eat cod every day and nothing else? Probably not. So, at this endowment point, because Imun Hakseng starts from origin here, he will have indifference curve going like that, that, and that, right? So, this will be his level of utility, indifference curve here. Okay? The further you go out that way, you're better. Okay? 자, 한번더 추해지겠지만 해봅시다. 노진우 학생, on the other hand, starts from here, and then his in that indifference curve will go out like this. Okay? So, your endowment, at this endowment point, his indifference curve will be like this. 이해되세요? 무차별 곡선이 한 사람은 이렇게 갈수록 좋아지는 거고 한 사람은 이렇게 올수록 좋아지는 거예요. Now, why do we trade? We trade because there is something called mutually beneficial trading opportunity, or MBTO. Okay? What I mean by that is this. Now, they can trade whichever way they want to, right? As long as the total amount is cleared 
how they can, you know, 노진아 학생 is producing so much code. So he can exchange a little bit of code to 이문호 학생. Then 이문호 학생 can give and return some amount of rice. So they can move from here to somewhere like here. Okay? Compared to this point omega, person A is on a higher indifference curve. Compared to omega, person B is also on a higher indifference curve. 두 사람 모두 더 나은 곳으로 간다는 겁니다. 그러니까 무역을 하는 거죠. 서로 물물교환을. They are both at a point where they are better off than before. That's the reason why they trade. In fact, Anywhere between these two indifference curves, 여기 오모 우리 과학 시간에 예전에 볼록 렌즈 가지고 할때 쓰던 저 볼록한 부분이요. Like this, this rugby ball-like region. If you end up anywhere here, you're better. Both people are better off than at omega. What we mean by that is by trading. We can improve both of their well-being. Not just one, but both. There was a concept. 이거 이런 형태의 무언가 효율에 대해서 맨날 얘기하는 거 있었는데 뭐죠? Exactly. Pareto. We call it Pareto improvement. Compared to when Yimun Hwaksin worked as a farmer and Nojin Hwaksin worked as a fisherman, when they do that, but they trade. They are both better off. They end up somewhere like here where they both attain higher utility. Okay? So, when will this process stop? Well, this process will stop only when their indifference are tangential to each other. 이렇게 이쁘게 만날 때요. 그럼 더 이상 한 사람 둘 다를 더 낮게 만들 수가 없는 거죠. If so, if even if you trade to somewhere like here, you might be like this. Then by moving to somewhere else, you can once again increase your utility, right? So the point at which this stops is when we have that's the most Pareto efficient point. You can no longer make someone better off without making another one worse off. No low-hanging fruit, if you like. Yeah? You gotta make someone better off, you gotta make someone worse off. Now that's the efficient point. But you can do that from a different endowment point. Then, for every different endowment point, you will arrive at somewhere different. 다른 또 어딘가로 가겠죠. 또 Pareto efficient한 다른 지점 어딘가. You're gonna go to another Pareto efficient outcome point. 아 진짜 이거 안 되는 건 되게 귀찮네. So you're gonna end up after trade somewhere on this line. Yeah. Starting from here, you're gonna, you might end up somewhere here. You starting from here, you might end up here, start from here like that. So they, the the bold black line, indicate all points of Pareto efficient allocations when you vary the starting point in the in that one point. What if what if you know, Yimun Hwaksing has virtually almost everything here. Where would they trade to? If you have them, where would they go to? So, everywhere along that line, you can be sure that you're on a Pareto efficient point. You cannot make anyone better off without making another worse off. So that's what's called a contract curve because that's where they will contract toward. So in Korean, that's called uh, that's called 계약곡선이라고 합니다. 계약곡선. 
저 검은 선이 계약 곡선이라는 거예요. 계약 곡선. 오케이? Okay? But the trading process that we have described here is a very general process. You know, I mean, they themselves, you know, somehow trading here and there. We don't know what's going on. There's no mechanism I have described. You know, they probably meet and they will negotiate with each other, but we haven't specified anything. Yeah? So there's an element of ambiguity. Okay, so they trade and they'll be better off, but how will they trade? What mechanism? Through what function? Through what mechanism will they trade with each other? And there comes in the free market. 거기에 이제 자유시장이라는 걸 묘사하는 거죠. So how does this um, work? Well, we offer a new concept called Warasian Auctioneer. Now that's uh, something that you can't forget about, but it works like this, okay? Introduce a third person, 전선화 학생 here, okay? She does nothing. Well, she's sort of dropping, she's using the eye drop at the moment, but she does nothing other than posting the price at which they can trade between both goods. So she is an auctioneer, 경매를 하는 사람이에요. 사라나의 대구 다섯 개 이런 식으로 one sack of rice to five cods, one sack of rice to seven cods, okay? That's all she does. Well, so what she does is like this. She determines this slope. 저 슬롭이 뭐냐? 별거 없어요. 저 슬롭이 쌀과 대구 간의 교환 비율이 얼마가 될지를 그냥 정해만 주는 거예요. 이 사람이 그런 사람이 있냐 없냐는 그냥 논 외로 하고. So regardless, so we, we don't talk about whether that sort of person exists in reality or not. We just assume it does, okay? So if Johnson Axing posts relative price between rice and cod like this, clearly, Yimun Axing will demand that I want the most optimal point for me, tangential point. Same with Lojinu Axing. I want the best point for me. Problem is, what's the problem? The problem is that neither Imuno Akseng nor Nojino Akseng is Jesus. What I mean by that is, they cannot create more than endowment. 5병 이어의 기적을 못 하신다는 거죠, 이분들은. 그러니까, what I mean by that is, think about this. Person B wants, okay, person A wants this much rice. Yeah? Person B wants this much rice. But if you add them together, it's less than the total rice supplied. If you add the, the demand for cod, Person A wants this much. Person A wants this much cod. Person B wants this much cod. Excess demand. Demand for rice is too little, and demand for cod is too much. Why did that happen? Okay, 발생한 이유가 뭘까? 왜? 사람들이 시장에 자기네들이 생산해 놓은 양보다 더 많은 쌀을 아니 더 많은 대구를 원하고 쌀은 한 1000톤 생산하는데 700톤밖에 디멘드를 안 하기 때문에 왜일까요? 잡쳐. So seeing that auction he has done something wrong. Auction he hasn't set the price right so that she set the price for rice too low so there's excess sorry. So x rice too high. So there is excess supply compared to demand. And she set the price for cod too high. Sorry, too low, rather. So people are demanding it more than they produced. That's not an equilibrium. There's only 10 cod to be shared between the two, but they're demanding 12 in total. Can't happen. Okay? 
So at that point, what would you do as an auctioneer? 전선 학생. 쌀에는 supply만 너무 많고 excess supply만. 코드에는 그러니까 대구에는 너무 디맨드만 많아요. 어떻게 할래요? 그럼 lower the price of rice and increase the price of cod, so making the slope more steep. So what the auctioneer will do is you go until a point like this. Okay. So she will work until. Excess demand is cleared. 초과 수요가 사라지는 곳까지 가도록 저 슬로브를 바꿔 주겠죠. 이렇게 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 이렇게. 그죠? Okay. So what that requires is in the equilibrium point, both the endowments for Good one, the amount of rice they produced in total will be equal to their aggregate, de aggregate demand equals aggregate supply. Aggregate demand equals aggregate supply. What you produced, you share between the two somehow. Okay? Or if you define agent one's net demand, if you like, you know, how much you demand more than your endowment. Net demand. 내가 지금 갖고 있는 거 대비 더 살까? 아니면 좀더 팔까? What should that equal to if you add them up across everyone in the economy? Zero. No excess demand or excess supply if you add up everything across person. Then, and only then, Where you have found something called general equilibrium. 이게 일반 균형이에요. 일반 균형. 그래서 그 어느 시장에서도 excess demand도 excess supply도 없이 다 clear 되는. So general equilibrium concept-wise, it's very simple. Yep. Demand equals supply in each and every market. That's it. But starting from that simple point. We can deduce a lot. That's the problem. Okay, so if you de define something as aggregate excess demand for good J as each person's net demand all summed across, they should all be zero. 그 어떤 시장도. 박경호 학생의 net demand, 한재 학생 net demand, 주영빈 학생 net demand, 최원 학생의 net demand, 이청 학생 net demand, 안창규 학생 net demand, 한철 학생 net demand, 이 모든 net demand들을 합쳤을 때 우리가 그걸 뭐라고 부르냐? aggregate net demand. 시장 전체의 총 초과 수요. 그렇게 있으면 시장이 클리어 됐다고 볼수 있을까요? 아니죠. So Melissa's net demand. Anderson's net demand, Raphael's net demand, etc., etc., all summed up, we get something called aggregate net demand. If that net demand doesn't equal zero, that means the market must be in some sort of imbalance. Demand must be either larger than supply, or supply must be larger than demand. But whichever way, we can't call that market to be properly in equilibrium. That's not an equilibrium. So, Warazian auctioneer, 전선화 학생 will work hard to achieve a point where no net demand in rice market, no aggregate net demand in cod market. 대구를 거래하는 시장에서도, 쌀을 거래하는 시장에서도 사람 시장 전체적인 초과 수요가 초과 수요라는 것이 없어지도록 만들어줘야 된다. Okay? Now, without proof, this is a, one of the most important results in economics, but requires a lot of mathematical understanding. I call, um, I, I, I recall something called Walrasian law or Wallace's law, or in Korean, Wallace's law, which is that the aggregate value 
of x, so p1 times z1 is what? z1 is aggregate net demand in rice market, but p is the price of rice per sack. So if you time that together, that's the total dollar value of excess demand in rice market. Okay? Same with this. This is the dollar value 가치로요. 가치로 평가했을 때 of excess demand in cod market. Okay? Key point is this must always be equal to zero. So if we have net imbalance in one market, net demand in one market for a two market economy, we must have exactly equal dollar value worth of net supply or aggregate excess supply in the other market. 그러니까 쉽게 얘기하면 쌀 시장이 10억 원 정도 초과 수요가 있다. 그럼 대구 시장에는 10억 원의 초과 공급이 있어야 된다. 원으로 쳤을 때. 수량이 아니고. So, you know, if rice market is in 1 billion dollar in excess demand, cod market must be 1 billion dollar in excess supply. That's because consumers all face budget constraint. That's crucial for deriving this. 개개인들이 모두 인컴보다 더살 수는 없기 때문에 디맨드를 다 합쳐 보면 결국 이걸로 돌아와야 돼요. The value of aggregate excess demand across all markets must sum up to zero. 이 얘기를 왜 징어게 하냐? Why am I even talking about this? Because if one market is in equilibrium, then the other market must also be in equilibrium. If that is zero, the only way that you can satisfy it is if the other one is in zero. In fact, you can generalize this result. If you have k markets or like eight markets, and you have seven, so k minus one markets in equilibrium, the last one must also be in equilibrium. But the reason why I'm talking about this is because I'm going to talk about something else. So until now, we talked about this concept of auctioneer, 전선학생 type of person, okay? But I haven't said one important thing. Can this type of general equilibrium always exist? In other words, can we always guarantee that 전선학생 will do the job and get excess demand of each and every market, zero, 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 ting, 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 ting. And then, you know, sort of like clear the stage like you would do at the end of a Super Mario stage or something like that. 그, 기억나지 않습니까? 그, so like, you know, time, 아니, 그거는 시작이고, 그래. 하면서 영으로 다 모든 게 탱, 탱, 탱 돌아오면서 모든 머니로 가잖아요. 그런 식으로 clear 할수 있냐? Well, you can do it. In other words, the auctioneer can do the job as long as the excess demand function is like this. Continuous function of price. If there's any jump like this, then it cannot happen. 무언가 점프가 있으면 0을 한번 지나칠 수가 없을 수도 있거든요. 수학적으로 봤을 때. 그래서 사실 수학적으로는 at every point, twice differentiable at every point 그런 식으로 하는데 그건 얘기하지 마시죠. But here's what I wanted to do for the last 10 to 15 minutes. Assuming that type of equilibrium exists, there are two incredibly important results which I think is a very natural starting point to end this lecture course, entire course in fact. One is out the way now. One is this. 후생경제학의 제일 정리입니다. First theorem of welfare economics. 
all competitive equilibria are Pareto efficient. So if you think of, if you measure efficiency as a concept of a point where no one can be made better off without making another one worse off. So you have exhausted all mutually beneficial opportunities. 다, 다 자같이 잘 먹고 잘살수 있는 거는 이미 했어야죠. 그건 efficient한 게 아니었습니다. 효율적이라고 얘기를 할수 있으려면 다 같이 잘 먹고 잘 사는 포인트는 지나서 어느 쪽에 가야지. 이분이 보드카 한 병을 더 먹기 위해서는 이분한테서 보드카 한 병을 뺏어와야 되는 그런. 오케이? That is a huge result. If you can, assuming that excess demand function is, has a nice property, and if you can find a point where all, no, so if you find a point where an auctioneer like Chon Sun Hak-sing does the job, and you find a competitive equilibrium where excess demand of each and every market comes down to be zero. 그러니까 이거를 우리말로는 되게 간단하게 표현해. 영어로 하니까 되게 어려워지는데 가격 시스템의 모든 거를 맡겨놔서 에콜리브리움을 찾았다라고 합시다. 가격 시스템. Then that equilibrium must be Pareto efficient. That's a huge result. That's the key to, if you like, sort of a free market, right-wing type of economics. Leave it to the market. When the market reaches its own general equilibrium, it will necessarily be efficient. That's the basis of the entire history of free market capitalism over the past 30, 40 years space. Okay? But, Crucially, there is one important, crucial assumption. 정말 중요한 가정이 있습니다. There must be market for everything. There must be market for everything working on properly. Okay? Now, I use this example because that pisses me off so much. I live on the 16th floor. Two floors below, there's a bold 50-year-old guy with a heavy sort of like Konde style way of speaking. Despite the fact that our apartment block has been designated no small smoking apartment, so you have to go out to our um, garden in front of our apartment block to smoke, he disregards it completely. Now, I have been able to get things sorted out, but I'll tell you what. Um, but he smokes. Every, it, it's not even predictable. If I leave the, the, my balcony door open, he smokes at any point between 6 p.m. and 11 p.m., twice. And that smoke goes all the way up right into the room where my 30-month-old daughter sleeps. 이 층간 흡연 이거 진짜 안 좋은 겁니다, 진짜. 하지 마십시오, 진짜. 정말. <laughs> so obviously I got things sorted out. So you know, while he's smoking out like that, you know, I have. I'm not proud to say this, but 세탁기 그 하수물을 받아뒀다가 let's just say that I threw it overboard about twice to three times. He came up and I engaged in less than polite manner, twice, and then now things are all good, you know. We reached an agreement where he would smoke at a specified time for about 15 minutes and then I would close the window in the middle and then we have come to an amicable agreement and then we had a bear over it. But until then, there is no market for this, even though it affects my utility. Everything and anything that can affect your utility must, there must be a market for it. So for all the microscopic dust coming in from China, we must have a market for that. 
for every, let's say, 이게 웃기지도 않지만, for every macro um, done in our household kitchen, we must have a market for all the microscopic dust. 고등어 구워서 난 미세먼지에 대해서도 마켓이 있어야 된답니다. So, that's the reason why I think in reality you cannot rely too much on that first theorem of welfare economics. Okay? But, that's telling you something incredibly powerful. You must be able to identify the exact reason why the market fails first before you can say the outcome is inefficient. 시장이 비효율적이다라고 말하기 내 지금 우리 경제가 돌아가는 게 비효율적이다라고 말하기 위해서는 뭘 먼저 해야 된다고요? 무언가 시장 메커니즘이 안 먹히는 외부 효과가 됐든 시장의 부존재든 뭐가 됐든 무언가를 먼저 얘기를 하고 이래서 시장이 비효율적일 것이다라고 결론이 나와야 된다. If people, okay, so it might be something like this. People must have equal bargaining power. In monopoly firms create inefficiency, yes. So that's another reason why welfare economics first theorem might fail. But you must first provide me with evidence that market fails in this particular context. Otherwise, I'm not going to buy it. 시장에 낚여두면 efficient 해요. 하기 때문에 시장이 efficient 하지 않을 수도 있다라고 나한테 얘기를 하려면 왜 그런가? 왜 시장이 존재하지 않겠는지 아니면 왜 사람들의 바그닝 파워가 이퀄하게 안 뿌려져 있겠는지 그것부터 먼저 identify를 하라고요. So you must be able to mark, identify the exact market failure over which why this theorem might not hold. Otherwise, the prior is the market is efficient. The prior is, leave it to the free market, then that does the job. Why must we get the government involved? You got to convince me better. In other words, the market is the benchmark starting point over which you must discuss. Free market is starting point. There is free market is inefficient. I got majorly efficient. I got one job. But why is it? 시장이 어떻게 실패하는지의 원인을 먼저 보여줘야 되는 거지 그냥 시장이 실패할 수도 있어요 인피션 그건 안 먹힌다고요 이런 컨텍스트에선 시장이 존재하지 않을 수도 있기 때문에 중간소금 같이 중간소금 같이 아님 이런 이런 컨텍스트에서는 시장 내에 어떤 협상력이라든지 이런 게 이분하게 돌아가 있지 않기 때문에 모노폴리라든지 그런 문제가 나오기 때문에 카텔이라든지 그렇게 얘기를 해야 되는 것이 그냥 시장 몰라요. 이거는 답이 안 된다는 겁니다. But you might be interested in something else. Now, each and every equilibrium may be Pareto efficient. Everywhere on the contract curve is a Pareto efficient point. But here, person A gets virtually nothing. 마지막으로 한 번만 더 합시다. Here, person B gets virtually nothing. So you might be interested also in the distribution of resources. There, for nice convex preferences, 이거 우리가 보통 그리는 형태 indifference curve 하면요, there will always be a set of prices that guarantee any Pareto efficient allocation to be a competitive equilibrium after an appropriate reassignment of the agent's initial endowment. What? What this is saying is this. You can compute any of the efficient point as outcome of a market design as long as you reassign the starting point differently. 
내가 다른 곳에서만 출발을 하면 그 어떤 파레토 이피션트한 지점도 시장 메커니즘의 결과물로서 나타낼 수 있다는 게제 2정리예요. 그 지금까지 이렇게까지 얘기도 사실 뭔가 쉽죠. 완벽하게 아직 뭔가 쉽죠. It's this. It's a very important point. This. Separate distribution from efficiency. I'm not saying distribution is wrong. That's a political judgment. Okay? But what I'm saying is that if you want to get to a particularly efficient outcome where distribution is very satisfactory, you don't have to distort the prices to do it. It's better to just reassign the starting point to be different. Start reassign the endowment, let the market do the job, and you will get to any efficient point. Distorting the market is not the best way of doing it. Reassign the starting point of the initial endowment and let the market do the job, then you will get to the point you want. 초기 부존자원만 적절히 정부가 조절해주면 일로 와! 너, 너네 집에서 어? 금괴 다섯 개 갖고 갈 거야. 이런 다음에 던져버리면 금괴가 있는 집이 과연 얼마나 될까 싶습니다만은 그런 다음에 시장이 맞게 되면 그게 가장 에피션트한 포인트라는 거죠. Now that second theorem is quite a powerful one, but also an unrealistic one, and that's why we get a distortion in price in reality. You know, income tax is not Never a distortion of endowment. 이란 거에 대한 가격을 바꾸는 거잖아요. It's a change in the price of your labor, not your endowment. But second theorem, why useful, is not the ideal outcome because you can't often change the initial endowment. 박경호 학생's IQ might be 139. I can't take away 23 and 미안합니다. 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 여기 IQ를 23을 붙일 수가 없다는 얘기죠. Okay? So changing the initial endowment or I mean 무슨 뭐 친일파 재산 모일 수 이런 형태로 가지 않는 한 Like in, in most circumstances there's a lot of limit to what you can and cannot do. But what that second theorem makes is pretty darn clear. Given the correct set of circumstances, you can separate the issue of distribution from the issue of efficiency. 분배와 우리가 택해야 될 시장이라는 거에 어떤 그런 메커니즘을 분리해서 볼수 있다는 얘기입니다. 적절하게 주어진 조건 하에서는. And if assuming you can, that's the point where you ought to be striving towards. It's better to tax on wealth generally rather than on income. 그 소득 세율을 높일, 높일 것이냐, 종부세를 도입할 것이냐를 예를 들어 봤을 때 개인의 시장 아웃컴에 덜 영향을 미치는 쪽에 세금을 매기는 게더 낫다라는 얘기죠. But you know, 종부세 and other stuff like that, the other tax on property also creates distortions of its own. But what, what I'm saying is, if you can, assuming you can, taxing on the initial endowment is the best way to achieve outcome. Then let the market do the job. Okay? So we've come a long way. Okay? We've come a very long way since week one. Now, what I wanted to set out from week one was to show you that your understanding of economics from sort of like very introductory course was you know, demand and supply. Okay, that's good, that's good. Demand and supply is the starting point, but economics is really about 
resource allocation. Re humans unlimited want versus finite resources. How do we allocate resources in the most efficient manner? We've circled back to answer that question today. Okay? Demand and supply was the end product of each and every one of your optimizing decisions. 내가 최적화를 하고, 내가 최적화를 하고. Then, same with supply. That was the profit maximizing decision for the firm. So, the fact that we are rational, optimizing, and sort of resource constrained optimizing, constrained maximizing agents put together created a market. And that market has a number of different possible structures, be it monopoly, be it competition, be it cartel, whatever. But circling back all the way, free market is more than a powerful tool to allocate the mechanism. Only if your assumptions about there being market for everything, there being equal bargaining power for everything, hold. Obviously, things don't hold like that in reality. And that's the reason why we see market failures, that's the reason why we see cartels, that's the reason why we see government getting involved. And even the government create failure of their own. You know, that accident happened in Korea, that's a great indication of, you know, government failure, I guess, to a large extent. But what I hope to do over the past 15 weeks was to give you a framework, a basis, a model through which you can answer and discuss more complex matters. You can talk about the limits of market. You can talk about the limits of human rationality. I hope to do that in behavioral finance courses and do that. Yep, but to be able to attack the limits of market or to be able to discuss where should government come in, whether the government should come in, starting point has to be rational optimizing consumer engaging in a competitive market. And that's what I hope to provide over the past 15 weeks. If I have done that and if you get a good understanding of that, clearly that's this course well finished. If not, well, I'm sorry that I haven't done a good enough job as a professor. I'm sorry about that. But you, you guys will move on. You guys will achieve great things in life. You, you know, I mean, you guys are bright. You guys have a good future ahead of you. You guys can take pretty good damn pride in yourself. But I think here in microeconomics, what you have learned here the basic framework, the starting point of logically progre logical progress of rational optimizing agents meeting in a competitive market and resource allocation happening. That process, I hope that you remember that because once you get your mindset, once you get your brain to think like that, you can then discuss the limits and the areas of improvement and the better decision making just as a whole. So that's me done for the course. Exam on Wednesday, best of luck. And then hopefully if you, if you guys are still interested, some of you and you guys have exam finished, then come on Friday and we'll do a couple of experiments whether you guys actually do possess rationality or not. Thank you and have a great summer holiday.